All right, I'll do the Inktober thing. Now, I usually do not like trends or things that are trending. I don't do those kind of things. That's not who I am. But I just so happened that I wanted to draw with some fountain pens. So I'm going to do a drawing with fountain pens and I'm going to use the black brush pen like I usually do. But I'm going to do something a little bit different. I don't know what this is going to end up being, but maybe whatever it ends up being, you can tell me if you want to name it or you want to say what something is. Some of you are good at that. Some of you say, this looks like this or I want to call it this. And I don't mind doing that. Do any of you do these trendy little like Inktober or watercolor month or something like that? Do you do any of that stuff? I normally don't. I don't pay attention to what other people are doing. I, sometimes I do those things, but it's just, it's coincidental. It's not that I'm actually trying to do it. Like now, I just wanted to draw some fountain pens. I haven't done that in a while. I wanted to do that. It happens to be Inktober. People are all getting crazy about ink. And I don't have a problem with that if people want to get together and do that kind of stuff. I, it's fine. I think it's a wonderful thing. People get together and do that stuff. It's just not me. I don't really care what other people are doing. I just do what I'm doing. And sometimes it coincides. And that's okay. I don't have a problem. I don't go out of my way not to do those things. I just, I just don't go out of my way to do those things. And just let me know. Is this something you usually do? usually look around at what other people are doing and try and participate and be a part of the group. It's okay if that's what you do. It just doesn't tend to be what I do. You know what the problem is? I don't want to force myself into something that I don't want to do. And I did the Inktober thing one time. And it was an absolute... I, I just it didn't have fun by the end. I was having fun doing what I was doing. But by the end, I was done. I just, I didn't want to draw anymore. And I hate that feeling. I don't want to force myself to do something that when I'm done doing it, I never want to do it again for a while. Especially something I love to do. Why would I do something that makes me not like the thing that I like? That's just me. I'm just saying that's, that's just me. And then stay till the end if you want to. Something's happening at the end of the videos. Most of you won't care. Some of you will. Some of you will say, oh, that's nice, and some of you will just click off the video. You don't watch the end anyway. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I'm not really focused on doing like a landscape or anything like that. I'm not doing a portrait. I'm not doing any of those things. I just wanted to see if I can do some abstract form, and then I'm going to add some color. And I've uh, wanted to add some color for a while, and one of my favorite inks is that Hiroshizuku. It's that Yoyaki is the color which is like a it's like a sunset but it's very bright when you first put it on it's very dull orange and then when you go over it again you add like multiple layers of that ink it gets bright and vibrant and then I went in with a regular fountain pen with black ink and I went over the top of that a little bit and then I went over it with some more of the ink and then I went back in with some of the uh, some of the regular fountain pen and some more of the brush pen. I just kept mixing it up until I was happy with what was going on. Then at the end, I add a little something extra just for a little flair. I looked at it and I said, well, you know, what does this look like? To me, it looked like kind of, I don't know, like a maybe a rock that was... You ever see those rocks when they dig them up like precious stones? They're all dirty on the outside, but you can see that glow from inside, that little bit of glow from that rock. So I was looking in some of that, and I was like, maybe it's, this is what it is, but maybe it's been sitting here for so long and stuff is growing on it. I don't know. Anyway, it was a fun piece, and I really enjoyed doing this. I really love using this ink. And um, I'm going to do probably a couple more fountain pen drawings because I really enjoy them. I haven't done them in a long time. So, well, maybe I have done them in a long I don't remember exactly, but it feels like it's been forever since I did just a plain old fountain pen drawing with no watercolor on it so I'm gonna do that I think I did one recently I have no idea so it's Inktober and I'm I'm guess I'm participating with one day I'm participating for one day I'm not gonna participate for any more days I don't think unless I do more fountain pen drawings but I don't know if that's gonna make it to the ink in the in October so I don't think it'll make it for Inktober it'll just be a drawing with some ink in it after that and I might call it Inktober even though it's not even Inktober maybe it's Ink November but anyway 
It's just, I enjoy doing these fountain pen drawings, and I don't know why, but since I started doing this brush pen drawing, this abstract brush pen part, I've never really incorporated some, some regular fountain pen drawing into that. I don't know why, because I love to do fountain pen drawings, and so why would be natural for me to incorporate that? I just never have. All right, so I would like to talk to my graphic design viewers here just for a second. I know you're here because I've spoken to some of you. And this doesn't just go for graphic design people. This goes for anyone who does anything with a skill where you're helping someone else to put up a video or whatever. Social media does not care about you. And they don't care about who they hurt and they don't invest much effort into any of you. Let me give you an example. Have you ever heard of those people who are trying to make a living off of companies and people like me that have YouTube channels and they go on this, this site called Fiverr? Or something like that. And or some other site could be like that too. There's there's mo many of them like Upwork or whatever. Anyway, in case you didn't know, if you're looking for like a skilled person to design something for you, you can probably find someone on Fiverr or one of these other uh, channels or company not channels, companies that have those people there and they will do those things for you and you pay them a little bit of money. And these people are not dumb. They know that there are a ton of morons like me who do YouTube and they know that once people's channels get big enough, then sometimes they have to source out some of that monotonous work, like making a thumbnail or maybe editing a video or something like that. So they they take a course on something. Let's say they take a course on graphic design to do thumbnails. And I know I've heard a lot of stories about people who have just dissected like a 10,000 thumbnails and they just figure out why does someone click on this and then they say oh if you use my thumbnail I'll be able to design it so people will click on it they do bring value to the table they, they understand what they're talking about and then YouTube goes and says yeah we figured out a way to make thumbnails not really matter anymore they wiped out like half of Fiverr with that gem of an idea they don't care about you the titles and topics are now what's going to matter most. They don't worry. Next they're, next year, they're going to have thumbnails come back. But right now, they just completely crumble your business. No, we not, they're not going to matter anymore. We're just going to have the, the titles matter now and the subject. But we're not really care if you get any money anymore. So maybe only the videos that contain puppies are what's going to matter next time. So it just doesn't matter. They just come up with these weird things. They pulled this crap with tags way back in the day. Everybody spent every waking moment deciding what tag do I need to attach to my video to get my video viewed. And, all the, and they would do all this research and they would hire people to sell what, what kind of people would send them like, okay, this month, these are the tags that are the hottest. So try and use these tags or go whatever genre. Oh, these tags are great for this genre. Go ahead and do it. And they had companies selling this information. YouTube just woke up one day and they're like, eh, the tags don't matter anymore. We're not going to use them. So they, they just screw with everyone. I'm convinced they don't care. They have these board meetings. They're just like, okay, everyone, uh, what was everyone spent most of their time on? What, what are they working on now? Well, let's just make that not obsolete and everyone will go crazy. That's fine. They, they're probably not. I'm not saying that's what they're doing. It just feels that way from our end. Okay, now I've got to mention something else because... This is driving me crazy too. I'm going around YouTube and I see all these podcasts. Now a lot of people have podcasts. And some of the most famous podcast people. I'm not picking on anyone. But I'm just just hear me out here for a second. So there'll be a guy on the podcast and they're, they're saying something that sounds like it, it's it's obviously not true. But it doesn't matter. The, the person, and they have nothing in front of them. So that they say something like, um, oh, uh... 30,000 years ago, there were aliens that came down and they they spilled their sweat on a fern and the fern dripped on the ground and all of a sudden there were people that came out of it and that's how people developed and all this stuff. And these podcasts, they're like, oh, wow. How come nobody's talking about this? How come nobody mentions anything like this? Wow. That's not interesting. What what did he say to prove anything he just said? Nothing. He just said something outlandish, and all of a sudden, oh, that must be how it is then, because he said something outlandish, and he said that he figured it out. So it must be true. They push this kind of crap all the time, and then, then you hear it at work. You go to work, or you go out in public, and you go to the store, wherever you're talking to people. 
And then they say something stupid. Like, did you hear about the 30,000 years ago with the alien sweat? That's, no, you can't really believe everything that person just said. You can't. That I don't want to hear. That's impossible. It's, you cannot believe that. And they're, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think it really happened. I saw it on in, on the History Channel. The History Channel is garbage. It's, there's nothing, nothing history about the History Channel. They used to cover like wars and political things like the, the changing of governments in different uh, countries at different times and this cover this war and then they, they would cover something else that happened, Industrial Revolution or the French Revolution or whatever they covered. But it used to have, it was based in history. Now it's like, oh, this these people over here say that they saw a man up in a tree. That must be an alien. And they these people over here said that they keep a pet dinosaur in their backyard. And so they must have one. So it's not, it's not real anymore. It's just all entertainment television. They realize, because, listen, let's be honest. They understand what gets the views people want to hear outlandish things and believe outlandish things so that's what they do and i'm not saying that everything that you hear that seems outlandish is wrong i'm not saying that there are some conspiracies that have been proven to be correct but i'm not this is not a don't click off i'm not doing a conspiracy episode anyway but this is just this is what our society has become we just we obsess about things that are probably not true. We believe that all of it is true, and we just tell everyone else that if they don't believe that that's true, then they're crazy. So I wouldn't even mind if they did what they used to do and just have some kind of evidence, some kind of information in front of them. Now they just say things, and everybody just takes it. That must be true. He said it, and oh, wow, it's great. And you know that they always come up with that one thing where they're like, oh, that this guy was an ex-military. He was in the Air Force, or he was in the Navy, and he says that he saw this too. So that must be true. It's fun times. It's it's, it's fun times. That's just I I. That's my favorite. So, oh wow! No way! How come nobody's talking about this? That's what they all say. It's the same thing every time. Nobody's talking about it because it's not true. No one else has thought of that. Is not a real thing. This person made it up in their brain, and that's why they're talking about it. No one else knows what's in their brain, so no one else is talking about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this drawing. Thumb up the video. If you are going to start a podcast and talk about some random crap that no one really cares about, and then you'll be the host of the show, and you have to interview someone that yesterday they were in the backyard and they saw lights coming down out of the sky and it flew around their kitchen, went to their house, flew around their kitchen and disappeared. And now you have to make up some kind of theory of what that thing was. Maybe it was a ghost. Maybe it was aliens. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe you can see into the fourth dimension. I don't know. You have to make up that story, but you're going to do that now. And so you let me know when that airs. I'll watch it. I have no problem with that. And then I'll go on this show and I'll say, oh, wow, no way. How can nobody's talking about this? And I'll do that for you. I, I promise I'll do that. And now, as promised, here's something a little bit different. Look at this guy. He's just hanging out. I know the footage is terrible. It's noisy. It's horrible. But look at him. He was cute. He's out in the park. He's just having a good time. I think he has a little bit of mange behind his front right paw there, but he looks pretty good. He's, he's doing all right. He's not too bad. And he, uh, he it was fun. It was just I'm trying to learn the camera a little bit more and get some more footage outside, but this was definitely some terrible footage. I, I didn't really have, I didn't really know what I was doing. So nothing, none of the settings are correct, and I'm still trying to learn that. But look, I just, I saw him. I said, wait a minute. Let me just get a little picture of this guy. Because he's having a little bit of fun. There's there's a, a rear end shot. We, 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 just go past this part. This is fine. But he's he's a cute little guy. Anyway, I'm gonna get outside a little bit more and do a little bit more work out there and do a little bit more uh, videos out there. Oh yeah, he's really messed up on behind that front leg. Anyway, uh, he, he was pretty cool looking. It came right up to me. The thing was right up to me. First, it was maybe like five feet from me. I didn't have anything for it. I. I showed it. I opened my hands. I didn't have anything for it. And it just turned away and started walking away. But he's a cute little guy. And he's just kind of, you know, that's his rash right there. That's, he's got his mange right there. But 
He'll take care of it. Don't worry about that. He's, he's all right. If you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in. You can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.